Oh, Phil and Phyllis, I remember, you know, they were, I guess, our mascots at that time. I don't even know whether they walked around the stadium or not in, out, in outfits, did they? I, I, guess, I don't even know where they're from, but I remember Phil and Phyllis. That's taking me almost, you know, over almost 45 years back now. Don Money slammed the first home run ever hit in Veterans Stadium. And his ball turned on Philadelphia Phil and Phyllis for the first time. Phil and Phyllis, they were um, pilgrims, and um, we thought we could do a little better. So uh, we created a character for them. Of course, getting butts and seats, winning is what does it. But when you have a bad team, you have to do a lot of promoting. And we were on a losing team for a while, from about 75 on. You know, obviously the attendance wasn't what you'd like it. Our fans were being criticized for booing Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. You suck! This was an effort for Bill to create a promotion. You know, we had Kite Man, we had cow chip throwing contests. So he did it right. He gets Jim Henson on the phone. I said, okay, get a hold of the people that made Big Bird on Sesame Street and let me talk to them. Oh, it's him, all right, Dave Winfield. <laughs> and you're Big Bird. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hi. Jim Henson sent uh, people from the Phillies to talk to us about a promotion that they wanted to do. So they asked us to design a costume. And I said, I would want something big and fat, green and fuzzy, undefinable. Being a fanatic or being a real sports uh, cheerleader, really, uh, you'd have a megaphone. That's where the whole thing started, with the snout. And the fact that he could sort of spit out his tongue was a nice, a nice little addition to people who would boo the Easter Bunny. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> you guessed it, the Philly fanatic has found George's box. <laughs> He's over having a little fun. Look, <laughs> he gets a head full of popcorn. Oh, boy. I didn't think the mascot was going to work. I liked the art, artwork they had done, and I said, now how much is this going to cost, the costume? They said $3,900, and we keep the copyright. Or they said 5200 and you can have the copyright. And that's when I said, I, I don't think this is going to be any good, so I'll save the money. We had uh, total control of the character because we had the copyright. Uh, it was our character. We offered to sell it to them, but um, uh, they chose not to do that, and they leased it for several years where we did licensing and paid them a royalty. Here's one of the the masks. Everybody put this together, put it on, and wished happy birthday to the Philly Fanatic. And it was this whole sea of green Philly Fanatic faces, which was great to see. We had license plates. This one's a coloring book. We did a jacket, the Grandstand Playbook. We explained that we had incorporated this into this design and that if you would do what we suggest, uh, you could reap some benefits that you weren't even expecting. I don't think the Phillies really believed or even cared. I think they were very uh, focused on just they wanted a character, they didn't care if it lasted for a season or not, and uh, we said, well, you know, we think this has longevity, but we'll just have to see. Three years later, I had to pay 500000 for the copyright instead of the 2200 I could have paid up front. The gas cap on the three-wheeler that we had was right between my legs and it was loose and I didn't know it was loose and I would pop a little wheelie. Well in those days you could smoke in the stands. So I remember popping the wheelie as soon as I did it I, I smelled I looked down the gas is running down the gas tank right into the crotch of the Fanatic and it was like an Alfred Hitchcock movie because I saw that I went down off of the wheelie and I looked up there's a guy with a cigarette in the stands going and I see him going, I'm just gonna flick this at the Fanatic. And all I could think of was this, boom! <laughs> and then like the, like the, you know, like the Warner Brothers cartoons are just be the Fanatic and the little black ashes and then just go, boom, 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 to a little, to a little pile on the floor. Uh, and that truly is the, you know, there's a lot of things that happen that were like, ooh, I take the costume off and I go, ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, that was a tough decision, is to find out who's gonna go in the costume. And we had a mailroom guy named Dave Raymond, and he was kind of a smart aleck kid. And I found out that his mother was deaf, 
So he had to talk with his hands a lot when he communicated with his mom. My mother went deaf when I was three. She would have the old hearing, bell tell hearing aid would clip to her bra and she would have a cord that would go up to her ear. When we would get into a fight, my mom would go, click. Go watch two deaf people communicate with American Sign Language and you will see this. It's, it's all the stuff that, that people do in costume when, they're, when they learn how to connect. No way the Fanatic was going to be able to do that. <laughs> I don't know if he was trying to do it or if he was saying, you win. <laughs> Dave Raymond was very clever with the things he did. And I said, just don't be dirty. In the shadows of the Fanatic, finishing his uh, dugout dance, we'll start the eighth. <laughs> He's had quite a homestand, He too. sure has. Meet the famous San Diego chicken. The chicken was grabbing breasts and drinking beer. Bill yelled at me when he said, go have fun, and I ran out of his office. He screamed, G-rated fun. The Fanatic will continue to put on the show. Hopefully the fans are sitting and watching because it's been very entertaining. And he's making the fans continuously laughing in between innings and intermingles with the fans throughout the game. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, Pence played with, with the Phillies. Is good friends with Tom Burgoyne, who is the Philly Fanatic. Well, Tom was the backup for a number of years, and nobody knew the difference, including me. I remember going through the, the newspaper and looking under S for sales and uh, there was nothing. I'm like, well, let me go to M for marketing. I was a marketing major and that's where I saw M for mascots. So I came in and actually interviewed and auditioned. I was really fortunate to work with Dave Raymond for five years. So I really had a, a sense for the character. Uh, I was ready when Dave left to, you know, I think, step in. <laughs> A lot of times the attention was on the fanatic and not on what was going on on the field. I was jealous. When I played, I hated it. He knew who he could play with and mess with and kid around with on the field, and he knew who to stay away from. No disrespect to Schmitty. <laughs> Schmitty's the greatest player I've ever played with. I got to think the fanatic, he rules over anybody that ever played here. Maybe, in fact, I was jealous of the Fanatic because he never got booed. He, he, everybody loved him and me, and who knew what was going to happen in a given night. They hate me one minute, they love me the next, they hate me, they love me. I mean, you, you know when the Fanatic enters. Let me put it that way. When Mike Schmidt hit, we all knew when Mike Schmidt hit. But when the Fanatic makes an entrance, it's something that uh, you have to really see. As I look at it now, as a 66-year-old uh, fan, broadcaster, uh, a little bit more mature, uh, a little more self-confident, and understand it more now. And the Fanatic fits right in perfectly. What's happening, Fanatic? <laughs> How are you? Isn't that nice of you? Yeah. Thank you. My favorite person. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Lasorda hated him. Everyone thought that was an act, but knowing Tommy the way I know him, you know, he didn't like it very much. Steve Sachs would get me Tommy's jersey. I would dress up the dummy as Tommy and do this routine. And that continued on until he decided to go on a slim fast diet with Oral Hershiser. He finally had it. He ran out, grabbed the dummy, hit me over the head with it, and it snapped the chin strap off. Tommy's a little bit hot, I think. And it was the only time in all the 17 years that the head almost came off. You'll see my hands go to it and pull it right back on. <laughs> he says you don't make fun of me or my ball club. <laughs> Joe Carter was the guy who broke the hearts of Philadelphia uh, fans back in 1993. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a belt. Way back, Blue Jays win it! The Blue Jays are World Series champions! Joe Carter came to town uh, when there was interleague play. And, it, you know, it, of course, the Fanatic had to have some fun with Joe Carter. The team is being introduced. The Phillies are taking the field, and the Fanatic and Joe Carter are rolling around in the outfield doing a little wrestling match. So, to me, Joe Carter, I mean, he's the guy, you know, everybody wants to hate, but the fact is he was a great guy and really kind of got it. He understood that, uh, hey, it's a game, but, uh, you know, there's a little bit more to it uh, than that. 
One of the great things that MLB does is they send the mascots to every All-Star game every year. Well, a few years ago, it was at City Field. The Fanatic was getting mobbed, and all I heard was, hey, Fanatic, you suck. Now, get over here and get a picture, because my, my friends won't believe that I, I saw you, you know. So I'm here to say, you know, the New Yorkers, they're big and tough, but, you know, fact is, I think deep down they love the Fanatic. What, what kind of uh, an animal actually is this? I see a green monster that maybe came from outer space. It, it's a... Uh... Probably eats bugs. Bugs, you know, I've got the long tongue, you know. He sure is good looking though. It's an undefinable character that people love, just the way he looks and the way he moves his body and the things he does at the ballpark. And, uh, very hard to explain. It was a great find by Bill Giles. Jack's a flightless bird from the Galapagos Islands. It seemed like the natural thing to have the fanatic evolve out of uh, the Galapagos Islands where uh, lots of strange things happen. You know, the fanatic did make a triumphant visit back home and I remember thinking, okay, I'm about ready to go out and greet these sea lions as the fanatic. And I'm thinking Charles Darwin's probably rolling over his grave right now, you know, thinking, you know, we have just spoiled, you know, uh, a billion years of, of nature, uh, things that were untouched, and now the fanatic's going to be hanging out with these uh, sea lions. And it was, it was great. They loved them. It became not only an icon of the Phillies, but an icon of the city of Philadelphia. And you see his picture all over the place. I don't think the Fanatic's going away anytime soon um, because of, I think, what he means to sports, but also to what he brings to the community. It's proof that this character has been nurtured well and long. Every player on the opposing team, they love him just as much as the fans here. What's not to love about the Fanatic? Everyone loves somebody that makes them laugh. Now watch this. The pig who's the mascot, the Fanatic shoots him <laughs> with a hot dog. I'm hoping the Fanatic will have a very long and a happy life. Conor McGregor will get back into the octagon to fight Eddie Alvarez for the lightweight title. McGregor will look to do something that's never been done at UFC 205, become the first